just knowing that. That is awesome. This video is going to be so priceless. This is awesome, man. All right, boys and girls, we're 92 foot to the bottom of the platform right here. You see it extended all the way out. You know how many trees I climbed to get this thing lit, man? So it's like you said in the Instagram thing, you, you can have anything you want. There's a hundred and I think it's 168 hours in a week. You've got to work about 121 to be able to do this, That's right? right? Yeah. <laughs> about 121. Y'all yeah. look at this right here. Brand spanking new. Brand spanking new 92 foot and I got it inside of a box trailer there. That's what I'm talking about. So this is Rooks. I almost said Lindsay's new lift. But... Hey, you got the other one. You guys, you got the other one sold, right? No. No, don't. No. The guy went ahead and bought another one. Oh, did he? The, the drug feed on this one. So. But I got several other people talking about it, but nobody's brought me no money. So your 80, 83 footer over there, the one that y'all been seeing me in videos in so much, is for sale. What, what is it, Rook? It's a 18 model. We got the guy from... I guess you're from All Access, right? Yeah, and it, I work for All Access. All Access. So y'all do the delivery. Y'all do a delivery and then do a training session yeah. on all of them too, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So I guess it probably makes it a little bit easier when you've got people that have run one or have yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's definitely easier for the knowledge to gain hold. You yeah, know, so I've, I've got I him. I promise you, I, I don't know anything. I had to learn it on my own and uh just do some you know just yeah i didn't out actually on my own. usually they warn me if like they if they have someone that's already ran a lift or anything mm -hmm. like that i mean from your 83 to what well, i mean what year is your 18, 83 18. yeah it's not too much i mean the the um the manual hydraulic system might be a little bit different but from that on i mean most of the toggle system is the same and everything so should be uh relative i mean we've updated like different type of regiments for me uh for like um for maintenance and stuff like that mm -hmm. but yeah we'll go over it the the controls are automatically designated up here so if i wanted to start it so, like, uh, with it on one before these two are linked the um, controls are automatically sent up here yeah. to go ahead and rip control yeah <laughs> <laughs> always, hit the, always hit the red button turned off when he said it. 
Oh no. Oh, I swear. That's, so you that's, just hit the button again to kill it then? No, you, I, yeah, yeah, that's what he said. I know, that's yeah. That's the right yeah, way to do it. Yeah, it's on and off. I, I just slapped this, I look, man. Every and you day, told me uh, every time to hit the skip button. I do no. that. You flip it back that's up. That's like a big, up. that's a big no no. You're, no, you're a god, you're a god stop doing that. Yeah. yeah. Because well, I, I when you guys need that, it's going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be there. Because we don't wore it out. I don't wore it out. So the micro switch in there, you know, it's not meant to be a kill switch like that. So it's meant to be an emergency That's why you're here. I'm so thankful yeah. I took off this afternoon to come up here and be a part of this. Oh, you're not on the clock. Oh, we're at, we're, no, I'm not I on the clock. You, I thought you were on the clock, man. No, it took off. All right, so obviously, key on the one position, you guys do have a bunch of other lights, and being a diesel motor, you guys do have low plugs. Not that you guys are ever going to use it here in Mississippi. Yeah, like but maybe once a year. Yeah, if you guys want to activate them, you guys can turn it on there. Once that lamp light goes off, that's an indicator that the glow plugs are warm enough and then you can go ahead and crank over. At this point, I could go ahead, turn the remote on and sync them. Typically how I start my day is I'm gonna throw that key on one. This key is really the only part of the remote that matters. So you could go ahead, take this key, put it in that remote I'm pretty sure it'll still be compatible with it. Yeah. Take this key, put it in that remote, and run this machine off of it. That is cool. Yeah, because this is really what's talking to the receiver on the platform. That is super cool. All right. So you guys do have the ability to tether this key yeah. to the to the remote, and I would suggest doing that. So it goes in there and it's twist yeah, to lock in. Yeah, you just okay. Turn it up. Gotcha. It yep. So I'm gonna turn it to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, so it's locked now. Yep. At just, that point, it's like, on. yep. So what you guys are gonna start seeing is the home screen come on and you guys are gonna see a fast blinking green light. Fast blinking green light only means that you have power to the remote. It does not mean that they are talking yet. To get them to talk, you guys have a green sync button on the side of the remote. All you have to do is tap it once. What you'll see after that is that green light essentially shut off for a quick second and it'll go to a slow methodical blink, meaning that this has ownership over the machine and this has taken control. Right. So you guys will see that now. So you just hit it one time. Okay. All right. That's all you're going to see is an indicator and then it'll just go to a So now you can control board. the whole machine from the remote right yep, there now. Yeah, correct. And that and you can do everything from that remote to yeah, this I mean, machine. This thing's essential. There, it, the reason why it is seven grand is because it's essentially a supercomputer. It's going to tell you everything that's going on with the machine. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you guys have really explored with the other pages, yeah. but it, there's a ton of feedback that it gives you. So this is the main load page. So it's essentially just going to give you basket weight, what setting we're on. So we're on tracks. Um, the turret is centered. The cage is not centered, and I'll go over that in a minute. But I can't lie about my weight no more. No, no, John. My, mine tells me all the time. John hit limb. Uh, Tim hit limb. It tells me that. <laughs> so engine start is going to be up. Engine stop is also going to be up, as you guys know. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I hit that. I turned the switch off. I swear I did. It's bad. You have to spend this much money to figure this out now. Oh, later on down the road. <laughs> so yeah. So up on it is start. Up yep. is also engine stop as well. Down would be if you guys bought the electric motor option. You guys didn't. So it's essentially a down switch is a dead switch. It doesn't do anything. Speed controls, turtle, rabbit, double rabbit. Turtle's gonna be used for offload, onload. That's yeah. pretty much what I, I, I use it for. Single rabbit is gonna be the most torque tier track. So if yeah. you guys are going Crawling up any, up yeah, yeah, correct. Speed, and then yeah. double rabbit, as you guys know, is it. the most, you know, RPMs to the track, it, except it's not, it just wants to go straight. So if you guys are going down a long stretch of road or a driveway, you guys have to cover a lot of ground. And as long as straight, that's pretty much where I'm gonna put it in double rabbit. All right. Okay, so then we I go see to your the, battery battery meter right there for the on the bottom right there. Yep. So you guys yep. will I don't I'll know see if it it's lit up. But yeah, it, it is. When you turn it yeah, a certain way, it. you can see it there. Yeah. So that yeah, that'll also show your battery, and if it is dying, the battery indicator will go red as a warning, and then it'll start beeping at you right before it dies. So um, everything on here is color coded, which you know confuses some people that are colorblind, but. Um, <laughs> I think it makes everything a whole lot easier if you know what the color code scheme is. Yeah. 
dark orange is going to be indicator of every track function essentially all right so these outside toggles right now with us being on tracks are designated for track drives if i want to orient myself with how the machine is oriented oddly enough this is the front of the machine i spent like eight yeah. months with the company thinking that was the front of the machine before you know green kind of figured it out and like yeah. the motor figured it out yeah um so as you guys see, you can also see the green arrows so I can align myself with the machine. This toggle being this track and this toggle being that far side track, forwards, backwards. All right, if I'm going simple. the other way with it, I'll turn the remote around. That helps. That makes sense. So if I'm, if I'm walking this way with it, <laughs> If I'm walking this way with it, really? This, really? Yeah, yeah. If I'm walking this way with it, I do this. If I'm trying to back in somewhere, I do this. Really? Yeah. Really? It helps me. It just helps me. Yeah, I mean, it's well, worse it yeah, it's that ADHD is killing me, man. How much does he's running Escobar a bunch, right? I guess he's turning backwards. You don't want to actually hit the wrong button, man. That's good. What do you do when you're an excavator then? Huh? What do you do? I do you do? I'm look, look. Hey, that's why my yeah, you're like the seat. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned around and I sit in the seat like this. Huh? Raises the window and hangs on the front. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, right. so, I would have never told nobody that right there. Dude, I, I, in the real world, every day, it helps me. Oh, yeah. But I also turned the switch off. I turned the machine off wrong. So here we go. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't have a green plug. And I know how annoyed our techs get when you guys machines come in for annual inspections and half the basket is full of you know sawdust because you guys never dump them out are you about to dump it huh is it about to dump <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> so you guys don't have a drain plug on this machine technically it's when not we leaf low and it comes all up on you and then... <laughs> technically it's not designed for this but really i call it the basket dumping feature because that's really the only thing it's a manual basket leveling so that's essentially what it is if you guys see this toggle has three functions mm -hmm. one i haven't told you about is the white function to activate it, all i have to do is press and activate this toggle forward hold it. and then i can go ahead and activate basket dump so you guys see that here That, that could be kind of handy. You could dump Rook out <laughs> from about 90 foot right. and see how well his ADHD goes I mean, I on can that. Use his, I can use that to scoop up his uh, stuff around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is a good idea. What? We could we use it for a scoop. Oh, he can with push mulch with it now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a brand new dozer, brand new estimator, but he's supposed to tear my stuff up. I got a brand new Avon over there. Besides the on and off thing, that's 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 next. And then so you I guys, can turn it. So the only thing I haven't shown you guys is because I don't typically like people utilizing um, the track function in that manner. So you guys know you guys do have the ability to close and open your tracks, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. We use we use it on. Yep. And you guys know it's very easy. I can just go ahead and close my tracks this way. You know, the reason I don't like it, doing it like that is it is very, very bad for it. You know, it, if I'm on a shot floor, I'll do it all day because they slide real easy and everything like that. If I'm on pavement or anything, I run risk of blowing a line. I run risk of tearing a track, popping a track off, and you know, just damaging the overall track system. So I try to not get people to do it that way. I will teach you how to do it up in the air though. Um, and a cool thing about this is I don't know if any of you guys do pruning or anything like this. Um, you know, a lot of people don't uh, don't utilize it to where the potential I think can be. So think of this, if you guys are running like a hedge line or something like that, you guys are already 15 feet up in the air without the tracks. Right, yeah. track and cut. Yeah. Off and 
hold it again and it keeps going. Yeah, but you guys have the ability so that you don't have to keep stopping. You can just send it straight up in the air. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, we go ahead and start it. I usually am looking around trying to get a good angle. Make sure that kind of my outrigger, they're going to be has gone off right yeah. I haven't let go yet all right so if I want to go higher I let go and come back down on it and when it stops that's an indication that hey my platform is stable and I can take my boots off my trail all right if I want to go ahead and suck my tracks in from this position I go ahead and hold the park button in and you guys will see that your track light comes on meaning that you guys have activation of your tracks so I can then go ahead and suck That's how I want you guys to get used to setting your tracks in and out because then you guys can set them out, go through that gate, open it back up on the other side. You guys should keep them in the out position unless you need it for that application. But if you guys do need it for that application, you know, it's going to save people's yards, it's going to save some tracks and everything like that. It's just a better way to utilize it. And I don't know if you guys have a designated mechanic, but uh, you guys do have the ability to go ahead and uh, run your track. So, if you guys have debris or anything in there, I can go ahead and clean it out. And it's really essential for when you guys are swapping tracks, if you guys ever do. And it's a huge help to be able to do it that way. Alright, so say I'm setting up. And I know I need all 92 feet of my platform. So I need my platform at the max height that it can get to, right? And you're impatient like me and you don't wanna go through the stabilization, stop, stabilization, stop. If you guys hold the park button, it basically eliminates that and will allow you to send the machine straight up into the air. And I'll show you guys that here. I press and hold the park button, toggle the outriggers down. trying it and it, it won't do it i'm like man i want a new machine i want some i want all the things to work <laughs> so i'm gonna film i'm gonna film the whole thing that way everybody can learn anybody on youtube yeah, can yeah, learn cool. uh, awesome. yeah. all right so what i'm gonna do hand it over to you you guys can stabilize it at whatever height you wish to right. um and then we'll get over to the stable uh my orange is dark orange is tracks yellow is all aerial controls all right yeah so upper boom Lower boom. Yes. All right. Turret rotation, telescoping for your upper boom. Yes. So to utilize your self-open feature, you're going to take your lower boom toggle and press it forward. It's about a minute 30, minute 40 second process. 
where it's going to take your basket, stick it close to the ground, and take that knuckle and stick it straight up in yeah. the air to where that lower boom is perpendicular with the platform. See this mash and hold it, man. Yeah, you'll notice more so when you guys get into telescoping and curve rotation, that double rabbit does have a significant Can you do that effect. when you're up there? Yep. Shut the door. <laughs> Shut the front door, man. What's this man talking about? Talking about this new new magic stuff. You realize you've only been using about 25% of what that machine's capable Dude, of doing. When you're poor and you buy one used, it's what you get, baby. You don't, they told me, like, hey, two grand, we'll send a guy out. I figured out a way to spend 200 and uh, they'll send one uh, on the house. Right. I probably should have paid the guy to come. I think it was 1700 bucks. Yeah, you would have been money ahead to hire him to come Dude, out. What I've learned right here, well, I'd have saved that money in a month. It would have been worth uh, sending them out seriously on that first, uh, when I first bought it. I think they told me keep going, but what you guys are going to see is when this lower boom gets perpendicular, the only other thing it does after that is it starts to telescope up. Mm -hmm. So at that point, with you guys having the platform at the height that it's at, we're going to have to telescope the lower boom down to get you. But before you guys get to the point when the perpendicular, when the lower boom meets its perpendicular point, I want you to stop. So right. You'll see it stop very quick, right there. So and what did you just call that function right there? Uh, what, what, what? That's a self-open feature. Self-open feature. Yeah, okay. and it says it right on there, so, well, now it won't, but it would say self-open okay. right here. All right, well, All right. done on that. Yeah. Now we gotta let this boom down a little bit. Yep, so you're gonna telescope it down just a hair. No, nope. so that's not that one. So you're gonna just tell it all down here, yeah, I see it now. So at that point, what we're gonna do is do a transfer of controls. So essentially it's shutting both controllers off. Yep, off, key off. Key off on that. And then back to one. Now controls are back on. Nah, yeah, it's in the basket then. You just throw this anywhere so it'll get fall off. It's only, it's only 7,000. <laughs> you made that by lunch, you treat it. Not on, his, not on his, uh, clock. I haven't Tell broke him where one you yet. Always so. put it. Doing good. Not today. Huh? Tell him where you always. I'm right down there in Mississippi and I'm redneck. Broke the remote. <laughs> well, we do have a harness. I'm not going to make you put it on if you guys don't want to. Right. Um, but whoever's going to be um, going ahead in the basket first, I'll have you jump in. Now, want, if everybody. I yeah. I want to feel. I want to feel how fast it is. Oh wait, let me in it. Hey, I, I want to see that. Oh, we can't power yeah. the remote. Remote up. See how much. Brand new dozer. I'm putting the. I'm putting the first scratch on it. All right. So. If you guys see the toggles, basically they're designated for booms, you know, yeah. so this is going to be your lower boom, this is going to be your upper boom. Notice sure. they are detented. This mm -hmm. becomes a lot of problems, this causes a lot of problems with people that operate from the basket as far as track function goes, because what they'll do is they'll operate at a speed that's too high for them, and then they'll take a turn that they're not expecting for, embrace with the remotes detented, and then they'll break the micro switch inside yeah. of there. Oh, Each like micro accent. switch in there is $500. So okay. my two suggestions are, if you guys are gonna track with it from here, you guys should track in turtle, and then obviously ensure that you guys are detented. <laughs> All right, so on and off, so this center pad right here, engine start, engine stop. I, I did know that down up here. I didn't know that. It does. Yeah, I do know that. Yeah. yeah. All right. On the remote, I don't think so. Outriggers. Up and down. Obviously, you guys are familiar yeah. with that. They are locked in place right now. I cannot make height changes until my booms right. recradle themselves. All right. Home function. You'll see that light is green. That means I have accessibility to go utilize my home yeah. function. So if I started to press this right now, it would first, the first thing that the home function does is it closes your telescoping piston so it'll it'll suck your telescoping pistons back in then it will find center and then it will start to um cradle so you your booms again so i what i was told and i may be wrong um whenever i, I learned about it a few months ago back <clears throat> they were saying that you kind of had to be kind of halfway no centered. you don't you, you can, can be, be anywhere turned all the way over there and push home there is no proximity sensors though really? so if you guys have an obstacle in your way, you guys it's have to make, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, so if you guys, but in a free scape like this, if you guys are operated 
over there, it It'll would free it. turn all the way back to center. And how do you do it? You just hold you it You just press and hold. It, it, it really comes down to center. And give gotcha. it time because you guys know that these machines are built with delays in them. Yeah. So what a lot of people, especially new customers, will do is they'll press and hold and they won't get the reaction right away that yeah. they're, they're trying to function. And then they'll let off of it and then they'll try to get back on it and then they'll go, oh, it's not working. No, you just got to let, give give it time to go through its process. And, Does it and, come with this little thing over it? I mean, is that normal? The plastic I'm joking. piece? I'm joking. It, oh. Mine had the metal, but it never had the plastic. That was called. Oh. You guys can order, I'm just saying. Yeah. We have a parts department. I they, know, y'all. Can I have that number? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in your PDI kit. All right. All right. All right. So <clears throat> speed controls, all right? So turtle is no light. Blinking red light is going to be one rabbit. Double red light. Double rabbit is going to be a solid red light. Yep. All right. So, um, so again, lower boom, upper boom, turret rotation, and telescoping. All right. So if I want to, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to have you go ahead up and telescope. You guys know how to operate this, so I'm not going to. Yep. There's not really any surprises uh from here so I'll, you said on the, the electric part on um, you're just going to hold this down nope and do your not function. that function so here so if you guys right here press and hold you guys can hear it activated and you got to hold that to run stuff up here just for emergency or yep so i can start uh functioning you back and tell us okay. it's gonna be very very slow that's normal that's, that's faster that's faster awesome. that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Ah, get out of here. See, I was holding this. I didn't know you held that. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. an electro pump. Yeah. yeah, that is super cool, man. Yeah. There, right there. Those little things like that is worth every penny of this. Just knowing that, that is awesome. This video is going to be so priceless. This is awesome, man. This is awesome, man. The things you learn when you buy something new. When you go into a mode like that, just put it in limp mode or anything that you have to. You have to go back home and like reset. No, you don't. You can like typically what I suggest is because the the reason you're going to be utilizing that is mostly because you ran out of fuel and you're up in the air and <laughs> no one's down there to fill up fuel. So typically I'm just going to utilize that and then boom all the way back down to the ground <coughs> so I can try to go find fuel to fill fill it back up with. Um, you don't have to return home, start all over to like, no. pick back up. Nope. No. You could go back, fill fill the. This is Rook's brand new lift. This thing is uh, quite a lot faster than his 83. Is. Damn, I'm gonna see how far out that telescope out of here. So 
So this thing's got a 48 foot side reach as long as you're not over 100 and i think it's 172 pounds if you're over 172 pounds which i am dressed like i am right now i generally come in about 173 174 but boots and everything on be a little bit heavier now it's going to limit you to about 35 foot which is where i'm at right now at lateral but as you go up it lets you keep going out so once you stand straight up you can uh so I'm all the way out as far as I go right now, this, this way. But you can see how far out I am over. And it will go, it'll go a lot further than that if I didn't, wasn't wait. So you can, uh, you can multifunction on this thing, three functions. So let's see here. Trying to get my basket centered right there. All right, right there. All right, here we go. All right. So you can see what I'm looking at. Each thing, each control multifunctions, and you control your multifunctions by, you know, if you want the green, you hit this right here to turn it on. If you want the blue, that one right there. All right, we're gonna go on up. So Rook bought his other one used, and so he didn't get any training on it. And uh, so he's learned quite a bit of stuff with uh, just on the training on this one. So we're gonna, so let's go going back in. All right, so we're all the way in. And we're gonna go up. So on the, main boom down there once you get all the way up on the main boom then when you keep going up then it starts telescoping see it telescoping right there So we're still going up with the main boom. We're gonna go up till it bottoms out. All right, we just bottomed out with the main boom. And we're not out at all on the stick boom. We got uh, two sections that'll come out on the stick boom right there. This will give you an idea. See, I'm quite a bit higher than that uh, red oak is right there. Yeah. All right, boys and girls, we're 92 foot to the bottom of the platform right here. You see it extended all the way out. Give you an idea how high I am. Look, there's Rook right there. I've actually come down about since the last set, I've come down about three or four feet, I guess, something like it. But uh yeah. these long guns ain't no joke, man. Like I said, I'm way higher than that oak right there. So I'll show y'all, see that's 83. He's got one, one telescope on the bottom down there. And this one's got two on the bottom of it.
that's the coolest thing man being able to multifunction on it so i was swinging and going down on the stick at the same time I'm gonna show y'all something. See, it's got a home button right there. You press it, hold it down. And this thing's fixing to go back. If that truck don't get in the way. So you don't have to line it up to cradle it. That's yeah, gonna miss the truck. Good. Which I don't want to cradle it. I'm going to keep it uh, up. Okay. I'm going to go down. Put in an order for that thing uh two weeks ago and they told him it would be about two weeks to get it and and he had been communicating with me and we talked pretty much every day and he said that they were gonna do a training session that was part of the the including the price of buying a machine and and uh he asked me he said if you want to come up here he said come up here and when they do the training so i i i was all about that i wanted to go up there and, and check that out <clears throat> I have spent quite a few hours in his 83 foot lift and uh, I really like the lifts. I except on his 83, one thing I didn't like about it was it's, it's a little bit slow and uh, they're supposed to have like a, uh, an update that they can do to it that will speed it uh, up. So my main thing was I wanted to go through the training stuff and I wanted to get in this lift to see how the speed of it was. This thing right here is uh is very very quick. It's um it's probably not quite it's not going to be as quick as a bucket truck is. A bucket trucks win the race for speed. There's no if ands buts about it. But this thing right here is is way more faster than his eighty three, and it's got a uh, they change the hydraulics on it a little bit like he was talking about earlier. It's got a it's got a pressurized hydraulic tank on it, kind of like an excavator does. And, and so if you have to fill it with oil, you've got to bleed the pressure off the tank, which is no big deal to do that. Because I, like I said, the excavators have that and you can dump the pressure off of them. No, you know, no problem to, uh, to do that. But I was very impressed again with the speed and how smooth the lift was. Rook's old one is very smooth. Uh, I'll say this, he does, he's going to sell his old one. And uh, the old one, he thought it had about 3,000 hours on it, but it don't. I went over and looked at it uh, at the end of the day when we got done. And it don't quite have uh, 2,300 on it. So if you're interested in that 2018 83-foot, it's identical to this one it, it, as far as the side reach and everything's identical. It's just this one goes up a little bit higher than his 83, so 92 to as compared to uh, 83. Uh, this machine comes in at uh, 9,200 pounds is what this one weighs. And 92 feet in the air ain't no joke. I mean, there's not many things that you can't, that you, that you wouldn't be able to conquer. I mean, we have trees around here that are that are taller than that, but uh, you, could, you could still whack them uh, pretty good with that so i enjoyed that being up there and and it's cool that that they do that stuff because like when rook bought his other one 
he bought a use, so he didn't get any training. You can get them to come do the training, and that's what he was talking about. He said, I should have went ahead and spent the money to get him to do it to where it would have sped up the learning process, and he would have got uh, you know, up to speed and been using all the functions on the machine because there was quite a few things that when they were going over all of it, that uh, Root was not utilizing and, you know, and didn't know about or, or, or whatever. And you heard him talk about, I don't know if you caught that or not, but that remote control costs $7,000 for, for that thing. So you want to make sure you keep up with that and not leave it around where to get run over. Or... So, yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, comment down below uh, your thoughts on, uh, on the lift. and Because, man, it just... Having a lift, even like my Howlette, the 5533 that I got, the towable lift, you can you can do so much more in a day, and you're not fatigued out from climbing on the rope or anything, and it's uh it's quite a lot safer too being in in the basket opposed to being you know on the rope and uh, and all that stuff. So the way that the lateral reach, the horizontal reach, lateral reach works on that thing is as long as you're not over 172 pounds in the basket and it's got it's got load cells that are down there uh, where the basket connects at as long as you're not over that it will extend out the full 48 feet if it if you're over that it it'll stop you say you're 172 or heavier in the basket it will then stop you at 37 38 feet laterally but like i said as you either start to pivot up or you or you go go down or whatever it will allow it to extend out it's just going to limit you as you're going out horizontally so like when you're straight up you can run the whole thing all the way up but uh yeah good stuff so okay have a great day we'll catch y'all later later taters